A little bit of a tense morning this morning. I think the, uh, the feeling of uncertainty that we're all feeling um, takes us back to the end of the parsha last week. So I'm going to start off by just looking back at that um, to remind us that what we're going through is not really something new. Uh, why is it not here? Ah, oh, dear. What? Okay. Ah. Come back to Zoom. You lost me, right? No, we hear you. We see you. Okay. So, Aliza, can you can can you bring up the um? the Word document, because I can't find it this second. No problem. I'm actually, I'll just, I'll send it here so that everyone can have it as well. Well, that's a really good idea. And then I can open it from where you've sent it. Yeah. Uh, so let's come back to... Again. Okay. I'm sorry about this, everyone. We should have done this earlier. You know what? It, it worked last night. Uh, let's try. Yeah, because uh, somebody came and took everything off the off the screen. <laughs> so, like, my PowerPoint's not here now. Everything's not here. Okay, let's just open that. For the moment, I'll share screens and then I'll send it in a minute when I. Okay. Uh, okay. And. Sorry about that. Okay, one second. Let me share a screen and then. Is it not here? Okay. We'll come back to Zoom. Share screen. Miracles at midnight. Okay, share. Okay, you're sharing? I, I put it there for the okay. moment and right. then I'll send it when I can. Okay. Um, well, you know, I didn't need to do that. I had the Tanakh open in front of me. Okay. So at the end of last week's Parsha, we have this incredible moment when the presence of God comes into the camp, rests over the Mishkan, uh, and fills it. And Moshe can't even go in. And then, the end of the parsha, the very last pasuk, tells us about the ongoing situation of having the Mishkan in the Midbar. Whenever the cloud lifted up from the Mishkan, the children of Israel journeyed on their journeyings. And if the cloud didn't rise up, they didn't go anywhere until the day that it lifted. Because the cloud of God was there on the Mishkan by day and fire by night in front of the eyes of all of, of Am Yisrael throughout all their journeyings. So apart from the idea that Am Yisrael had a, a tangible presence of God in front of their eyes all the time, there is also another aspect of the cloud over the Mishkan. Um, Aliza, let's go back to, uh, uh, to seeing me instead of the... Okay. Um, and that is complete uncertainty. Whenever the cloud rests on the Mishkan, everybody takes out their, tr their tents and puts them up and settles down. But do they take out their houseplants? 
or do they leave them on the, on the wagon? Do they unpack for the summer or do they keep their winter clothes out? Because you never know when the cloud comes down on the Mishkan, how long it's going to stay. When it comes up, that's when you're going to leave. And if you wake up in the morning and it's still on the Mishkan, then you know you're staying put for another day. But when do you know that? When you wake up in the morning. And every day you spend the day wondering, am I going to be packing up and moving tomorrow? Or am I here for another day? And another day? And another day? And that is what Sefer Dvari means when Moshe says to the people, that for 40 years, God tested Am Yisrael in the Midbar. And what was the greatest test? The greatest test was the uncertainty of never knowing when am I able, when am I going to pack up and move? And when, how long am I staying put for? And I think that at the moment, we have a sense of what that uncertainty means as we wake up in the morning and we don't know is today going to be a day that we can go out of our houses? Is it going to be a day that we have to stay at home? Is there going to be a change in the medical situation of our family today? Is, it going to, is that going to change the limitations that I'm living with? Uncertainty has suddenly become, where well, we've been so used to knowing that the sun rises in the morning and we go out to work and we have a routine and we know what our day and our week has in store for us, suddenly we're living with total uncertainty. And we can feel what Am Yisrael felt in the Midbar. And yet, what did they have in the Midbar? They had the constant assurance that even though you don't know what tomorrow brings, the presence of God is there on the Mishkan. And I think that we have to go looking for that inner belief today as well. To know that even though all Sidre Olam seem to be, all the, the reassuring aspects of the world that we have come to depend on seem suddenly to be hanging in the balance, there is something inside all of us that we can fall back on. Some people are completely isolated now. Some pe people who live by themselves, who, have, who don't have family on their doorstep. What do you fall back on? So you can, there, the, each of us as human beings have an inner resource. And that inner resource is what the Tanya tells us that we have from the sixth day of creation. When God man made man, God places in every one of us nishmat chayim. And what the Tanya tells us is that that nishmat chayim is chelik eloham imaal mamish. That inside every one of us, there is an aspect of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. What it is, is the, the deepest shorish of Vaneshama. But it's, the th it's, where, it's where we can go to reach, to look deep down, to find reassurance when things seem blackest. And what I want to look at to bring us out of that black place a little bit today is to look at in the, the end of the Haggadah for Lela Seder at a, uh, a piyut, which is the first of the piyutim we say when we begin to get to the lighter part of the seder. When, uh, when we've finished the Haggadah, and we've finished our meal, we've finished the Matzah, and we've finished the Maror, and we've finished our meal, and we've finished Halel, and we've said Nirza, then we get to the part of Hag the Haggadah when we be begin to just sing. And the first of the piyutim that we sing in that part of the Haggadah. And isn't it amazing how people have begun to find singing as a, a resource right now? 
that people are standing on their balconies and singing together because they can't make contact in any other way in all different parts of the world. So we begin to sing. And the first song that we sing is the Piyut Vayahi B'chatsi Alayla, which if you again, you look at our, at our sheet, uh, I should be able to share this. No, Aliza, you share the screen. I'm nervous. <laughs> Sarah Joe, I sent the file so you can download it uh, and then share it immediately. I sent it in the group chat to everybody. Do you see it there? Miracles at Midnight? Go to group chat. And this way you can also control the share. You can point to whatever parts you're up to on the source sheet. Okay, great. You know what, let's just open it here. Okay. Is it still the wrong one? Okay. Um, am I sharing screen? I'm not sharing screen yet, right? You're not yet, no. Okay, so let's do share screen. Okay, sure. Uh, this piyut, which we call Karev Yom, and which is actually called Avachen Vayhi Bachatsi Alayla, which is just the first line of the piyut, was written by Yanai, uh, one of the most popular and oldest Paitanim, uh, who lived in Eretz Israel in between the 6th and 7th century, which is a time of utter chaos in Eretz Israel, uh, after the, uh, the Muslim conquest. Um, when there are very, very few Jews in the country um, and the, uh, the Kila is going through difficult times. Um, and it was not written as part of the Haggadah. It was written as a, what's called a Korova, a tefillah to go with Parshat Shavua in Vatei Knesset for the Shabbatot when we read Sefer Shmot, when we read Yitziat Mitzrayim. Um, but it was so popular that it became part of the Ashkenazi Haggadah. And as you say, he starts off by saying, Ubechen vayhi b'chatsi alayla, az rov nisim hifleita balayla. In the middle of the night, right? In the middle of the night is when times seem darkest. You created wonders. You made miracles happen. Many miracles happen in the dead of the night. Berosh ashmurot zehalayla. In the first watch of the night, which is the beginning of the night, ger, uh, and this is, we're going, what does the piyot do? It's going to go through lots of, uh, let's come back to me for a second, stop share. The piyot is going to go through lots of examples of miracles that happened to Am Yisrael in the middle of the night. When things seem dark and there seemed to be no hope of salvation. So what's the first one? The first one is Ger Tzedek Nitzachto Kenechlak Lo Laila. You know what? I'm just going to read the whole, through the whole piyut, and then we're going to read a, a perush, which identifies each, ones of the, each one of the uh, uh, miracles which are listed here. And while I read it, let's see, you, t you test yourselves. Which ones can you identify and which ones do you not know? Uh, you know, which ones are more riddles? And because many of Yanai's piyutim are really riddles, they're testing, testing you as you read them. What's your bakiyot in Tanakh? How much do you know? What words associate for something with you <laughs> uh, and, and bring something to the forefront front of your consciousness? So what's the first example? Berosh Ashmurot Zehalayla. And of course, he's starting with the very beginning of Jewish history. At the first watch, in the beginning of the light, night, Ger Tzedek Nitzachto Kenechlaklo Laila. A Ger Tzedek won victory when the light night was divided for him. And I'm just giving you a clue that's Aram Avinu. You have to try and work out when did that happen. Vayhi b'chatsi alayla, end of the first verse. 
Next one, still in the life of Avram Avinu. Dant HaMelech Grar Bachalom Alayla. You, God, judged the king of Grar, the Philistine king of Grar, in a dream of the night. And now we're going to jump to one of the other Avot. Hifchadita Arami Be'emesh Layla. And you frightened an Aramean in the middle of the night. Who is that? Whose lifetime is, which of the Avot is that? So that is Lavan chasing after Yaakov. And again, we'll see in a second when, when that happened. And immediately after that, Vayisrael Yasar Lael, Vayuchal Lo Laila. That's an easy one. Yaakov struggled with God, in other words, the angel, Vayuchal and defeated him, Balaila, Laila, Vayahi Bachatia Laila. And all that happened in the middle of the night. So the first stanza is. Sefer Bereshit, three mir four miracles that happened to, um, to the forefathers of Am Yisrael in the middle of the night in Sefer Bereshit. And if we skip down to the, uh, uh, the perush that I've given you, which is called Kimcha de Avishuna, and was written by a, an Italian rabbi and scholar called Yochanan ben Yosef Trevez, uh, who lived in Italy and worked, probably worked in the Hebrew press in Bologna in the 16th century, um, and maybe worked as a proofreader in the printing press of Daniel Bomberg, who uh, uh, was the first printer to print the Talmud ever in history. So he wrote a commentary, Kim Chad Avishuna, on the Machzor, which included the Haggadah. And this is his perush to Vayechi Bachatzi Alayla. Az rov nisim hifleita balayla. Kmo shehulech umesaper hanisim sheeru belela pesach. This piyut is going to tell us all the miracles which happened to Am Yisrael, not just in the middle of the night, but on Lela Seder. In other words, when we sit at our Seder table, we should we should be aware that this is a miraculous moment. And it's something to look forward to because whatever happens, however, however our lives play out in the next few weeks, there will be a Lela Seder in two weeks and two days time. And we're going to be sitting at our Seder table, whether we're sitting there on our own or with our immediate family, or whether the, uh, the regulations will have changed by them and we'll be able to sit in a larger circle. And we'll know that it's a time when miracles happen to the Jewish people. What's the first one, says, uh, says uh, Kim Chadi Avishuna? Ger Tzedek is Avraham. Nitzachto, natata lo nitzachon. God gave him a victory, in Sefer Bereshit, when uh, the five kings attacked the four kings and Avram's nephew Lot was taken prisoner, Avram divided his camp and he sent his servant Eliezer to fight against the five kings and he overcame him against all the odds and freed all the prisoners. And that's what happened, Kenechlak lo Laila. The piyut is playing on the idea of, of, of Vayechalek and saying that happened in the middle of the night. Shenema Vayechalek alehem Laila. The Pasuk in Bereshit says that Abraham divided his forces and attacked them in the night. Huva Avadav, Abraham by himself and Eliezer with the rest of his. Uh, of, of his uh, 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 supporters, Vayaken, and he overcame them. That's Avram's first miracle. Second miracle, when, when Melech Grar took Sarah away from Avraham. Danta Melech Grar, that's Avi Melech. Bachalom Halayla, Shenemar, Vayavo Hashem El Avi Melech, Bachalom Halayla. God came to Avi Melech in, in a dream in the night. And told him, you've taken, a, uh, you've taken Avram's wife, you have to give her back, otherwise you're going to be sorry. So that's the second miracle for Avraham in the middle of the night. 
הפחדת ארמי. That's לבן הארמי, who appears in the beginning of a Haggadah, right? The ארמי of Edavi. Who traced after Yaakov when he left the camp, when he left Padan Aram to come back to Eretz Yisrael and try to take back all his sheep and his daughters and his grandchildren. And God appeared also to, Av- to Lavan in the night and told him, Hands off Yaakov, don't touch him. That's the next miracle in the middle of the night. And then, of course, the next in the life of Yaakov, Vayisrael. Yisar La'el, Yisra, Yaakov, whose name is, becomes Israel, fights against the angel of God. There's a misprint in here. Um, he fought against the Malach and was and overcame him. As the Pasuk says in Bereshit. Okay, so those are the miracles of Bereshit that happened in the middle of the night. Now, if we come back to the piyut, I'm going to stop sharing, and, and, and you can look at me, but I'm going to read the piyut from, the, uh, from, uh, from my Haggadah. Zera b'chorei patros, machatsta b'chatsi halayla. You crushed the firstborns of Patros is the, is the Greek name for Egypt in the middle of the night. Chelam lo matzu bekumam balayla. And then their forces, their army became impossible to find when they rose up in the middle of the night. Tisat nigid haroshet. Silita bechokvei laila. That's a really hard one. That's just just uh, just riddles. Tisa is a um, is a minusa. The flight of the prince of Haroshet, which is short for Haroshet Hagoyim. Anybody got any ideas who that could be? So the prince of Haroshet Hagoyim is Sisra, when he fights against Dvora and the tribes of uh, of Naphtali. Uh, Silita bechokvei laila, you prepared his path, or you uh, um, paved his path with the stars of the night. So, what are our three our three miracles there? If we come back to Kim Chadavishuna. Uh, Zera bechore patros, that's Mitzrayim, we got that. Tisat negid haroshet is antifat kmo yinvash alai ochel shem miher betesha meot rechev barzel. Yanvash is the, is the, he's, using, he's using Italian to explain, the, to explain the Hebrew. We're better off with the Hebrew. Um, is a... Um, uh, I think he means it's a tray that you, you bring, you prepare, provide food on. Um, but let's just go with the, the explanation. Shemihel b'teisha me'ot rechef barzel, that Sisra went out with uh, 900 iron chariots. Negid haroshet is Sisra, shehaya mi haroshet hagoyim, who is from haroshet hagoyim. Silet ha-kochvei or layla, Hakochav is, is, is referring to the Pasuk in Sefer Shoftim. Hakochavim mi mesilotahem nilchamu im sisra. There was a miracle. The stars in their, in, in their paths fought against Sisra. The, the forces of the heavens came and, and overcame the uh, uh, overwhelming armies of Haroshet Hagoyim with their iron chariots, and very much in the same way as in uh, the disappearance of the armies of Egypt in Yamsuf, when the chariots became in, stuck in the mud and then overcome by water. In the story of Sisra, his iron chariots become stuck in the mud in an t- t- in incredible rainstorm at the foot of Har Tavol. And then the, uh, there's landslides and mudslides and they're all washed away and Sisra escapes by himself. 
And then, of course, we know the end of the story and his death in the tent of Yael. So those are the, so those are the miracles of uh, Makat Bechorot, Kriyat Yamsuf, and the defeat of Sisra in the second verse of the Piyot. And all of those happen in the middle of the night. I'm coming back to me. Ya'atz mecharef lenofef ivui. Hovashta figarav balayla. Who can you think of who was first a threat and then suddenly fell as the uh, uh, corpses dead in their tracks and the, and the threat disappeared? Think about Yerushalayim to see if you can think when that happened. Next one. Karabel umatsevo bi'ishon layla. The god Bel was forced to his knees and, it's, uh, and his statue in the dead of the night. Le'ish chamudot nigla raz chazut layla. And the person who is called Ish chamudot had secrets revealed to him from the visions of the night. So what are those three miracles? Uh, the first one is the easiest one. Again, if we come back to our perush, uh, share screen. Ya'at mecharev, mecharev. Who is the uh, who is the profaner of God's name? That is the servant of Sancheriv, Achar Shalach Avadav Lecharef Hashem. When Chizkiyahu is the king in, in Yerushalayim, and Ashur destroy the kingdom of Israel and gobble up towns all over Yehuda and come to the walls of Yerushalayim and besiege it. And Chizkiyahu feels, and the, the Ashurim describe him afterwards, like a bird trapped in a net. And then he prays, and suddenly, uh, oh, and there's a, the, 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 siege, the siege is going on, and Sancheriv, the king of Ashur, sends his general, Rav Shaket, to stand in front of the walls of Yerushalayim and mock at Chizkiyahu and say to the people on the walls, let me in, let me in. <laughs> like the, 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 three, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Let me in, let me in. You have no hope of defending yourself the great me, against me. I'm the greatest king in the world. Uh, Chizkiyahu has destroyed all the places where your God is worshipped, or the Bamot. All he's left is the temple in Yerushalayim. Your God is not going to defend you. You should just give up and let me in. And then Chizkiyahu prays, and Lenofef Ivui, Yenofef Yado Har Batzion. What's the Ivui? The Ivui is Al Shem Ki Bachar Hashem Batzion, Iva Kol Moshavlo. Is Rav Shaker addressing Tzion, calling her Ivui? Because Tzion is called Ivale Moshavlo, the, the place where God desires to live. And what happens? Hovashta Fugarav Shenemar, Vihine Kulam Pigre Mitim. And the, the miracle was that overnight, the night after Rav Shaker made that uh, tempting appeal for surrender before the walls of Yerushalayim, the very next night, there was a, uh, a panic and a plague in the, in, in the camp of Ashur. And when everyone in Yerushalayim woke up in the morning, they looked over the walls and saw that the camp was filled with dead bodies and, empty, and, and not a single moving being alive in it. And they were saved. That's the very dramatic Bait Rishon example of Vayihi Bachatzi Alayla, a miracle that happened in the middle of the night. Karabel, 
עוז שנאמר קרא בל קודם נבו. is a name for Nebuchadnezzar, says uh, this, this commentary. מצבו, and what the, מצ... the, the מצבת? וצלם שהקים נבוכתנצר בבקעת דורה. לאיש חמודות is דניאל. So there is a story in the second parak of Seth and Daniel, which I think we talked about last, as it happens, we, we looked at that parak last week. And in that parak, is, I think it's, it's, it's Daniel parak bet. Um, yes, that it's Daniel parak bet. Uh, da, uh, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream of a statue. Um, and he wakes up, as we said last week, he wakes up in the morning and he can't remember the dream. And he... Uh, and the only person who can reveal the dream is Daniel Niglarad. Daniel hears the, Daniel uh, hears the dream, see, uh, has a dream and sees the, uh, um, the, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has. And he also has the, inter the interpretation revealed to us. And as it happens, we learned that last week. But in the parak after that in Sefer Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, who's heard in this dream that his kingdom is represented by a, the top half of an enormous statue whose head and chest is made of gold, in the next parak in the book, Nebuchadnezzar create, creates an enormous idol and calls everyone in his kingdom to come and worship it. And the... the uh, punishment for not attending, for not, not, paying, uh, not paying attention to the regulations, is death. And that's the story of the three friends of Daniel, um, Hananel, Mishael, and Abadiah, and Abadia, who uh, defy the decree and are then thrown into, the, into a fiery furnace and are saved from there. So, this, so the, the uh, Piyut is taking all the stories of Sefer Daniel and pushing them into one quick verse. First of all, the, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, which was revealed to Daniel in, uh, in, a, um, in the middle of the night. Um, and the, uh, the, the salvation of the friends of Daniel, of the, the three princes of Israel, from the fiery furnace as a result of the uh, Pesel, the, uh, the idol created by Nebuchadnezzar. I want to share another screen with you. I am going to come back to share screen. And I put on this PowerPoint uh, illustrations of these different miracles. So I just gave you... Uh, Uh, can you see, can you see, uh, Aliza, can everyone see it? Yes. Okay, great. So this is the, this is just an, a Rembrandt illustration. Most of the pictures I put on here are Rembrandt of Avraham and the three Malachim for our, our quick, quick teal through Sefer Bereshit. But here is the, is also Rembrandt's illustration for the book, the Perush written by Menashe ben Israel of Sefer Daniel. And this is a, a, an illust Rembrandt sketch of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And you can see the top of the, the idol of the, pet, of the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed of is marked Babel. And uh, the rest of the Pesel is marked with the different, um, country, the different empires which succeeded. So the, the, the two arms are marked Midi and Paras, which is Madai and Paras. The, its middle is, is marked Greco for Greece. And the, uh, the, the two legs of iron and clay are labeled Rome and Mahomet for Christianity, it represents Rome. And Mahometan is, uh, is uh, Islam. And those are Menashe ben Israel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the empires which are going to rule the world until the uh, end of days, until Geula actually comes. 
Uh, okay, let's stop share. Do this, let's escape, stop share. Okay, come back to me. Um, so that is the, uh, that's the idol of Sefer Daniel, but our, uh, our piyut is going to stick with Sefer Daniel, Kanira. Uh, um, Yanai was very keen on Sefer Daniel. Um, and he continues with another miracle, which happened, very famous miracle, which happened in the middle of the night. Mistaker bichlei kodesh neherag bo balayla. The drunkard who made himself drunk using the holy vessels, neherag bo balayla, was killed on that night. Who used the, who drank from the uh, um, Klea Mikdash in the middle, and, in, and then in the middle of the night? This is the story of Belshazzar the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the last king of Babel, and who also is the story is in Sefer Daniel, I think it's Perak Tet, um, where Belshazzar has a feast, uses, takes out all the kelim of the Mishkan for his guests to drink from, and then suddenly in the middle of the feast, oh, and we're going to share screen again, because this is a wonderful picture. Uh, Oh, you know what? Maybe I forgot to put it on. That would be fun. No, I did put it here. Uh, we'll come back to that one. Here we go. Um, uh, oh, and we can't see the whole of the picture, but if we could see the whole of the picture, you see the ghostly hand on the wall above Belshazzar. You can see Belshazzar is in the, in the foreground. The Clea Mikdash are on the table. Uh, all his guests are absolutely terrified because of something that we can't see. And if we could see the whole picture, you can see at the very, very, you can see this hand, which is writing on the wall. And you can see part of the letter Nun, which is in the rest of the picture, and I didn't put the whole picture, I managed not to put the whole picture onto the uh, PowerPoint, but you can look at it later. Um, just look it up on Google. Uh, Rembrandt's Belshazzar's Feast. And that hand is writing Hebrew letters on the wall, which say, Mene, Mene, Tekalo, Parsin. Although on the, on the wall, when you look at it, instead of, write, of appearing um, horizontally, the words are, are written vertically, because that's the way uh, um, uh, Menashe ben Yisrael interpreted why uh, people in, the, uh, in, in Babylon should not have been able to read letters which, are, which were written in Babylonian script, because our, 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 uh, our letters now that we use now are actually Babylonian letters. Uh, so everyone is amazed, everyone is terrified. Daniel, they, they, Belshazzar calls Daniel to interpret the writing on the wall, and he's told, stop share. And he's told that, uh, that his kingdom has been measured, it's gonna to come to an end, and, uh, and it's going to be destroyed. And that very night, the Persians attack Babylon, and uh, Belshazzar's capital is captured, and Belshazzar himself is killed. Not directly by the Persians, but never mind. Uh, and that's the next miracle of the middle of the night. The next one, Nosha Mibor Arayot Poter Ba'atute Laila, is another one, again, still from Sefer Daniel. Uh, which is an easy one, Noshab Mibor Arayot, that's Daniel who was saved from the lion's den after he insisted on praying, even though there was a royal decree forbidding anyone to address prayers to any god other than Melech Malchei Amalachim uh, Koresh, the king of Para, uh, Dariabesh, the king of Para. Um, and as a result, Daniel is thrown into the lion's den. But he's also called Poter Be'atute Laila, the uh, one who 
solves the, the nightmares of the night. Because as we've seen, each king who has a, a, a terrible dream uh, calls Daniel to interpret. But at the end of Sefer Daniel, Daniel himself has a dream in which he see, sees all kinds of mythical creatures which represent, in the same way as the idol represents, the different, um, the, the different empires which are going to rule the world. His, uh, uh, his dream... Here you go. Can you see it? His, uh, no, previous one. One back. Uh, his dream shows the, all these mythical creatures, which you can see at the bottom of Rembrandt's sketches. It's another one of Rembrandt's sketches from Menasha Ben Israel. Um, a uh, winged beast, with, which is partly a lion, and uh, all kinds of strange creatures with horns. These represent the different, uh, um, the Greek, the Hellenist, the Persian, uh, possibly the Roman empires, which are going to rule the world and eventually be destroyed by some kind of geula, which uh, remains a riddle at the end of Daniel's, Daniel's dream. So that's Poter Biatute Laila. And then the, 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 we, we're getting near to the end of the period, don't worry. Uh, takes uh, the, next, the next part of the same, uh, same verse stays within Persian miracles. Uh, by the way, I didn't point out to you that this period goes Aleph Bet, right? As Rav Nisim Hifleita Balayla, Berosh Ashmurot Zehalayla, Ger Tzedek Nitzachto, Vayhi Bachati Alayla, right? The, the first verse is Aleph Bet Gimel, the second is Dalet Hei Vav. The third is Zayn Chet Tet. The third is Yud Kaf Lamed. And we're on Mem Nun Samach, and we have a Sin instead of a Samach for the, in the uh, third, last, third to last verse. And who is that? Sin A Natar Agagi, the Chatav Sfarim Balayla. The, ag, the descendant of Agag kept hatred in his heart and wrote decrees, books, decrees, in the night. Who's that? Oh, Haman HaAgagi, who in the middle of the night went to Ahasuerus, who in the middle of the night uh, couldn't wait till the morning, but wrote out the, his decrees against the Jews, and went to Ahasuerus and asked permission, and we received the signet ring to uh, um, announce the destruction of the Jewish people. And he too, Vayhi Bachatsi Alayla, Orarta Nitzchacha Alav, Beneder Shnat Layla. Sorry, Beneded Shnat Layla. What happened here? Uh, can everyone still see me? Can everybody still hear me? Aliza? Okay. We can hear you. Can you see me as well? Yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I just suddenly got a, a, a very different screen, so I, that's why I was asking. Okay. So, Orang Tanitz Lisa, we can mute everybody again. Beautiful. Okay. Orang Tanitz Chacha Alav Benedet Shnat Laila. So, how did salvation come? You brought, you awakened his victory over him when sleep wandered in the middle of the night. And we're just after Purim. So we all know that that's the story of Ahasuerus, not being able to fall asleep in the night, calling for the, the, uh, um, the books of, uh, of, of Chronicles and hearing the story of Mordechai and then sending Haman out to ride with Mordechai on the... Um, on the horse, through, on, the, on the king's horse through the streets of Shushan. Uh, remember that our parashan told us that all of these miracles are supposed to have happened not just in the middle of the night, but on Lela Pesach. 
Now, we've got no record to suggest that the uh, miracles described in Sefer Daniel happened on Lela Pesach. But uh, in, in the case of Megillah Esther, when Haman made his decree on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, um, and the Megillah specifically, to, uh, sp specifically tells us that, that it all started in Nisan, and that Esther went to the king for the first time on about the 10th of Nisan. And so the night, turns out to be Seder night. And the miracle which overturned the decree of Purim and brings salvation to the Jewish people actually does happen on Lela Seder. Let's come back for a second to our, uh, our, our perush and see where we're up to there. Dal Shatsar, Nerag Bobalaila, Noshami Bogariot Daniel, Hotel Bute Laila. And now we're up to the last and the most difficult part of the, perhaps, of the, of the piyut. Pura tidroch le shomer ma mi laila. It's up, right up here. Um, wine will be pressed, and it's, it's actually blood spurting like wine. Le shomer ma mi laila. To he who guards in the night, Sarach Kashomer Vesach, Ata Voker Vegam Laila, the he cried out like a watchman and shouted, The morning has come, but also the night, by Hibachatia Laila. And that was in the middle of the night. So, what is that referring to? And our Parshan tells us, uh, explains it very nicely. Purati uh, Droch. Like in, uh, I think it's in Sefer Ovadia, uh, the Nevoa against Edom. Uh, I will, I, I, God, will tread uh, the, uh, the first, the first uh, um, Assis, the first juice which comes out of the grapes is called, in a, in a, in a grape harvest, when you tread the grapes, is called Pura but it's also because it's supposed to come out very red and it's also a, uh, a metaphor for blood. So when God describes his vengeance against the enemies of, of Am Yisrael, he calls it Pura Darachti Levadi. I pressed blood like grapes alone. Keshomer Mami Laila. Who does that happen to? Le'edom Sheneemar Sheneemar Masaduma. Eli Koremi Seir, Shomer Mami Laila. So this verse is a vision of how God will eventually defeat the enemies of Israel who are represented by Edom um, and make their and uh, and, uh, and and make them and defeat them, tread on them as a uh, um, a grape harvester treads his grapes. Veda Shekola Nisim Shinesul Yisrael. Hen Belel Pesach. And all these miracles which were done for Am Yisrael happened on the night of Pesach. Leilo Shel Abraham, the night of Abraham. Leilo Shel Avimelech, the night of Avimelech. Leilo Shel Paro, Leilo Shel Gidon. He's just thrown this in here for fun because it wasn't in the actual period. The night when Gidon defeated the, uh, um, the Midianim. Leilo Shel Sisra, the night when Sisra was defeated. Leilo Shel Daniel, the night when Daniel saw salvation, Leilo Shel Sancheriv, the night when Sancheriv was defeated outside the walls of Jerusalem, Leilo Shel Mashiach Le'atid Lavo. And the night when Mashiach will come at some time in the future. The Shem Davar Ata Boker La Tzadikim Vigam Laila L'Rashaim. And then the last promise is that day will come for the tzaddikim and Laila, night will come and destroy the rishaim 
and the, it's a vision of salvation for all of Am Yisrael. I wanted to take you for a minute to one more example. You can see me right now. Let's stop, stop screen sharing. I want to take you to one more example of, I don't know that we can call it a miracle. I don't think we can call it. Well, in a sense, it was a miracle. The miracle wasn't a miracle which God performed. The it was a miracle which happened in the hearts of people. And that is another uh, event which happened. And I suppose it did happen to all of Am Yisrael, even though it happened in one place and at one particular time. And it happened on Lela Pesach. And the miracle was that it happened at all. And that is Mered Geto Varsha, which began, and it wasn't a coincidence that it began, on Lela Seda, in the middle of the night. When people in, ghetto, in, the, in the ghetto, those who weren't fighting, those who weren't part of the attack, were sitting at their Seda tables. And when the Germans didn't, under any account, expect any kind of activity to occur in the ghetto, because they assumed that the Jews would be all seated around Lela Sedel telling the crazy story of how once God took them out of slavery and brought them to redemption, when the machinery when the Nazi machinery, now as they sit at the table, the Nazi machinery destroying the Jewish people is working at full blast. And somehow in that year, despite the fact of all that's going on, and despite the fact that now they finally know what, the, what seems to be in store for everybody who leaves the ghetto, Jews find it within themselves to rise up and to attack and to fight for salvation. And they know that they have no chance. They know they have no hope whatsoever of destroying the enemy. And yet they fight in order not to die as victims, but to die as, to, to die fighting, to die proudly as Jews. And that is an event which happens to all of Am Israel because their defiance becomes a symbol for every member of the Jewish people who ever hears of it. And it's part of our chosen, and it's part of our, uh, our heritage, and it's part of what gives us strength in, in every moment that we live through, through strange and puzzling times. And we've seen a good number of those just in our lifetime in Medina Israel. And that too was an event which happened on Lela Pesach. And the reason that Medinat Yisrael marks that event, marks Yom HaShoah V'Hagvura, not on Lela Sedel, is because it happened on Lela Sedel. And nobody is going to have Holocaust memorial events at the same time when everybody's sitting down at Lela Sedel. Although it's certainly true that the Shoah plays a part in the seder of everybody who sits down, every Jew who sits down to a seder ever since it happened. And certainly ever since the uh, miraculous creation of Medinat Yisrael from the ashes of the Shoah. So Medinat Yisrael doesn't, doesn't mark the Shoah on Lela Seder. It marks it on the first possible day afterwards, after, after Pesach is finished. And what is that date? That date, for, for no apparent reason, is Kafchet Iyal. And it just so happens that Kafchet Iyal, I'm sure many people have heard me say this before, if you count the days from Kafchet Iyal to Yom Ha'atzma'ut, the the, the, the days are seven days, as if Am Yisrael sits down on Yom HaShoah V'Hagvura, on Kafchet Iyal, Koach Iyal, the strength of Iyal, of Nisan, sorry, Koach Nisan, and counts seven days of Shiva for all of the enormous proportion of Am Yisrael who were wiped out by Rishut, by the evil of the Nazis. 
and stand up again on the seventh day on Hei Yal, on Yom Ha'atzmaut. And for me, that transition is the, the ultimate realization of the Haftarah that we actually read on the first, on the first morning after Lela Seder um, on Pesach. Um, and what is that? Um, Aliza, can you, sh can you share your, your screen? Because I think I didn't put it on the, on the copy that I have on my screen. Can you share the source, source sheet on your screen? Uh, if not, anybody who has the source, source sheet in front of them, just open up your Yechezkel. Um, the Perak of the uh, um, of Chazon Ha'atzamot HaYeveshot. Ko Amar Adonai Elohim Me'arba Ruchot from the four, God spoke to me from the four winds. Boy Haruach, I'm sorry, I'm reading not from, I'm not reading from the beginning, let me go back to the beginning. Vahid Bar Hashem Elai Lemor, Ben Adam, Sim Panech Al Har Se, no, 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 no. Here we go. Haita Alai Yad Hashem, Vayotzi'eni Baruach Hashem, God brought me out by His Spirit, Vayanicheni Betoch HaBik'ah, and he placed me in the middle. Aliza, scroll down to the end of the, the last source on the sheet, which is, uh, which is this parak in Yechezkel. Last source on the sheet, one second. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Um, and he showed me a valley which was full of bones. And I want you to look at that word, atzma'ot, and think about an Aleph coming into it. The Evirani Alehem. And he part, made me pass over them, Saviv Saviv. Behine Rabot Meod Al Pne Habika. Behine Yebeshot Meod. There were many, many bones all over the valley, and they were absolutely dry. Vayomarelai, and he said to me, Ben Adam, Hatichiena Ha'atzamot Ha'ele, can these bones live? Vaomar, Hashem Alokim, Atayadata. Only you know, I replied. And he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of God. This is the word of God to the dry bones. I am bringing spirit into you, and you shall live. Venatata alechem gidim. I will put sinews upon you. The haaleti et alechem batar, and I will bring flesh upon you. The karamti alechem or, and I will cover you with skin. The natati vachem ruach vichitem, and like at the very beginning of Maasev Reshit, I will blow a spirit into you, and you shall live. Vidatem ki ani Hashem, and you shall know that I am God. Venibeti kasher tsuveti. I prophesied as I was commanded. By he kol kehinavi, and there was a noise as I was prophesying. Vehinei raash, and there was a rattling. Vatik revu atzamot etzem el atzmo, and the bones moved, came close, one bone to another. Vraiti vehinei alehem gidim uvatzar ala. I saw that they had sinews upon them and flesh. Vayikram alehem or milamala, and then they were covered with skin from above. But there was no spirit in them. And he said to me, Prophesy, speak to the wind. Prophesy, O man. And say to the wind, Come from four different directions, O wind. And blow into these corpses. And let them live. Vehina beti ka'asher tivani. I prophesied as I was commanded. Vatavovahem haruach, and the spirit came within them. Vayichyu, and they lived. Vayamdu al raglehem, and they stood on their feet. Chayil gadol meod meod, a great and mighty multitude. Vayomaylai, and he said to me, Ben Adam, O man, ha'atzamot ha'ele kol bet Yisrael hema. 
These bones are all of Am Yisrael. Hinei Omrim Yavshu Atzmotenu. They are saying, our bones are dried out. Ve'avdatik Batenu. And no hope is, is left to us. Nigzar Talanu. Our fate is sealed. Lachen Hinave. Therefore prophesy, Ve'amar Ta'alehem. And say to them, Ko Amar Adonai Elohim. Hinei Ani Foteach Et Kivrotechem. So says the Lord. I will open up your graves, and I will bring you out of your graves, Ami, my people, and I will bring you to the land of Israel. You will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves, and I bring you up from your tombs, Ami, my people. I will put my spirit upon you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your, on your land, and you shall know, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, saith the Lord. And that, I think, that atzamot, into which the spirit of Aleph is blown, becomes Atzma'ot. Eliza, can you stop sharing? And that brings us to the very last verse of our piyut. Karev yom asher hu lo yam velo yom velo laila. And it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful tune, if you know it. Karevyam, karevyam, asheru lo yom velo laila. A day is coming, which is not day and not night. Ram hoda hoda hoda, ki lecha yom, ki lech af lecha laila. Exalted one, let us know that the day is yours and the night is yours. Shomrim hafked, hafked le'ircha, kol hayam v'chol halayla. Set guards on your city, on Yerushalayim, all day and all night. Ta'ir ke'or yom, cheshkat layla. Let the light of the day brighten the dark of the night. Vayehi. That is the miracle of the middle of the night. So, thank you for being with us. B'tfilah, that our light should be filled with, uh, that our night should be filled with light. Amen. That we get through all of this. Amen. That we sit together, that we get through the coming weeks, that we do the work which has to be done within and without, in our houses and in ourselves, with our families, and wherever we can reach out, however we can reach out, in whatever limited way our Medina is going to make that be. Whether it's phone calls, or it's Zoom classes, or it's FaceTime, or it's reading stories to people who need stories to listen to. And that we get to Lela Seder. And however we sit in Lela Seder, it's the best way. And that Bachatzi Alayla Yavo Ha'or. In the middle of the night, the light should come. Pesach Kasher V'Sameach, everybody. The Simcha is there waiting for us. I don't know how it will come, but the place to find it is inside, not on the outside. Aliza, I want to thank you very, very, very much for making, making this all the, all the shiurim happen. Everybody's shiurim. I want to remind everybody that on Monday night, the Magid is happening at a Zoom class with Michelle Tsion and Jeffrey Sachs, and I'll be introducing. Um, and we're inviting everybody to come and join. Um, 
And if anybody wants, on this Friday morning at 9.30, Tzvi Leshem will be doing a visualization of Yitziat Mitzrayim from the Piyatetz Rebbe. Um, and that will also be a Zoom class. So if you want to join that, you're welcome to join that as well. So there's to be in English on Friday at 9.30 and the Magid on, in Hebrew on Monday evening at 8, at 8 p.m. And uh, wishing all of us chosen and strength and, uh, and smiles to get us through the day. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Sarah Jo. That was wonderful. Thank you for very inspiring. You have no idea how good it is for me to see all of you. No <laughs> idea. Okay. It's wonderful, Sarah Jo. Thank you so much. Have, 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 thank you, have a wonderful hug. Wonderful hug for everybody. <laughs> however, yes. however we do it. However we do it. <laughs> yeah. Best we can. Sarah Jo. From Gesha myself, thank you. Uh, Bye. Um, Thank you, Suri. It's Bye fine now. Someone takes lead as a default bill. You know, everyone uses these cups again. Bye, Marsha. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's absolutely Ooh, wonderful. Great 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 gave us a lot of strength. There's Hashem. I need it too. Anyone would like to join for another class today? Bracha Kron, we'll be doing a 10.30 Bracha Kron. Insights on the Haggadah. Hi, Letta. Welcome to join. Hi, Esther. Good evening now. Hug Sameach. Bye, Esther. Hug Sameach. Hug everyone. Bye. Miss you all. Hi, Tzipora. How are you doing, the Bracha? It's very good to see everybody's faces. Wow. All stay safe and healthy. Oh, that was really fun. Yes, Netta. So how do you go out? You just press leave meeting. Press leave.